I then subtracted the angle I was given to and from pi. Okay, so it was pi minus this number and then pi plus this number. Okay, whatever that angle was. So that's just kind of like a quick guide when it comes to the homework and they ask you to come up with other representations or to identify representations, um, you can kind of stick to this system. Okay, keep the R the same, subtract two pi, add two pi, change the sign of R and then you're gonna do pi minus the angle you were given and then pi plus the angle you were given. And those are some ways to, to come up with the other representations, okay? So, and that's exactly what this little summary is saying, okay? So you can add two pi, if this K is negative, that means you could subtract two pi, so on and so forth. And you can keep adding two pi if you wanted to. I added two pi just once. You could add two pi again and get another representation. And then I subtracted two pi once. You could subtract two pi again and then get another representation, okay? And then the other one is, is if you change the sign of the radius, then you have to add two pi, then you have to add pi, okay? And that's if k were equal to zero, then you're just adding pi and you get another representation. Or if k is negative, then pi minus two pi is a negative pi, okay? And then that gives you another representation. So you just keep going on and on and on in that respect, okay? So this means that there are of course, an infinite number of ways to represent polar coordinates in the system, because you could just keep going around and around and around and around that un those unit circles, right? Well, not unit circle. Unit circle means radius is exactly one, okay? These are not necessarily unit circles, they're just circles, but you can go around and around and around those circles as many times as you want, okay? However, it's different from the rectangular system where there's only one way to represent that point, okay? And that's using the X coordinates and then the Y coordinates, right? So they want us to talk about here, like how do we go back and forth between the two systems, okay? And that's important. Like I said, in calculus, that's what they're gonna want you to do eventually in calculus, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, let's say we have a point here whether you're visualizing it in the rectangular system or the polar system, doesn't matter. You got a point here. Let's use the theta and the R that show us how to get this in rectangular, I mean in polar coordinates compared to what the point looks like in rectangular coordinates, which is X and Y. So this point is actually two, representation, two representations. It's this and it's this, right? And what they want us to do is find a relationship between the two, okay? And so what we do is we look at um, how would we use X and Y when it comes to this angle and R, okay? X, Y, and R. Well, we know that the sine of that angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which would be Y over R. We also know that the cosine of that angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is X over R. And if I solve each of these for X and Y, I would just be basically multiplying by R on both sides. And so then I get Y all by itself equal to R times sine theta. On this equation, I'd be getting X by itself times R cosine theta. So that's essentially the relationship between the two on how you will convert your polar coordinates to your rectangular coordinates, okay? So when I go to try to um, do example two, it says find the rectangular coordinates of the points with the following polar coordinates. And so in order for me to do that, um, I'm basically just going to use these rules. So this is my R and this is my theta. X equals um, R cosine theta, which is five, cosine of pi over four, which is, let's see, on five cosine of pi over four. Let me make sure my calculator is in radian. Yes, it is. So I get five square root of two over two. And then for y, we get r sine theta, which is five, sine of pi over four, 
which is going to be five sine of pi over four, five squared of two over two. So then what are the coordinates here? The coordinates are five square root of two over two and five square root of two over two. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this for each one individually. So for here, if I graph this, here's pi over four and then one, two, three, four, five, there's the point, okay? If I look at this, this would be a positive X measurement here and a positive Y measurement there. And if I'm rotating this around, which is five, um, five units, right? Notice that it's going to be a little bit more than um, five. So, yeah. Let's look at, it's actually a little bit less, right? Because I went five units out, or I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five. So this would mark out five units for the circle, right? Because this is five units out. So when I rotate it, it's still five units out. And this would mark five units there, okay? However, what are these numbers? So five, oops, clear, a fraction, five squared of two over two is approximately 3.5, which is why if you look at the X value and the Y value, they're smaller than the value five because 3.5 is smaller than the value five, right? Um, not only that is that my coordinates are positive and they should be positive because see where my point landed, it landed in the first quadrant, okay? So these answers do make sense as far as like the location of the point is concerned, right? Now let's try this one. So if I wanna convert it, I'm gonna do X equals negative two um, cosine of five pi over six. And I get square root of three. For Y, it's negative two sine of five pi over six. and I get negative one. So the coordinates here are square root of three and negative one. And so if I draw this one, um, I would have to go, it depends on how you do it, right? If you wanna do five pi over six, um, I, for me to visualize them, sometimes I have to change them into um, d degrees, just so I can know what, where it's at. So 150 degrees means it's about right here. So um, if it's right here, then that means there's my ray. And then I would go out, oh, but it's a negative two. So I don't go out to, and then my point's there. It's gonna actually reflect over this way. So my point is actually down here, okay? And again, if I plot it the way I like to plot it, which is to mark the two first and then go clockwise five, um, pi over six, I will end up at that same location, okay? So this is where the point is. The point is down here. Now look at the coordinates I have here. So remember, this is two units out. So this is going to be two units. This is going to be two units because of the radius of that circle. Now, what is the square root of three? Square root of three is approximately 1.72. So this X value is a positive 1.72. That's pretty accurate, right? That's just a little bit inside the two. And then this value here looks like it's pretty much right in the middle of there. Again, I'm not on graph paper, so it's not perfect, but it does look like it's the negative one Y value, okay? So it does correspond to its rectangular coordinate systems. It's in the correct quadrant and those values look like they're um, appropriately less than the radius here, okay? So let's go ahead and keep going. Now the next exploration says to plot 
the point negative six, zero. So X is negative six and Y is zero. And how do I know it's X and Y? Because it says in the rectangular coordinate system. So this is X and this is Y. Um, it says superimpose the polar axis on this system. What does that mean? That means draw a bunch of circles, okay? So at radius one, you're gonna have a circle like this. At radius two, you're gonna have a circle like this. Now I'm not great at drawing circles, so I'm just trying my best. But eventually at six, you wanna have a circle going through the sixes. Not too bad, right? I'm not gonna draw all of them, but you would have another circle at three, another circle at four and another circle at five, okay? So if you do, I'll draw one at five. Oh my gosh, I might as well. I'm just making it look like a bullseye, right? It's just, I know my circles are not gonna look pretty. They always look weird, look more like weird diamonds. Um, okay, so I tried. Um, <laughs> obviously it's not perfect, but you get the idea. So you're just drawing a bunch of circles with those particular radiuses on top of the rectangular system, okay? And so then notice that this point here can also be represented by going around pi units, but going out six, right? So you go around, that means this is your ray, and then you go one, two, three, four, five, six units out, and that's your point, right? Um, also, if I plot the point zero, negative four, so again, X is zero, Y is four, negative four, so it's here. And then if I draw all the little circles, notice that this time it's going around um, how many, what is the angle it's going around? It's going around the angle um, three pi over two, and then it's going out one, two, three, four units, right? From that again i can't draw circles but you get the idea okay now just like before there are other representations for that point okay so not only do you have this the regular counterclockwise and the positive radius representation but you also can add two pi to this and then get this representation you can subtract two pi from this and get the counterclockwise representation you can change the sign of that and then add pi and get this representation, or you could change the sign of that and subtract pi and you get this representation. Every single one of those is going to land at the exact same spot, right? So if I go seven pi over two, that's um, two pi and then another half of a pi and then, or I'm sorry, it's two pi and then another three pi over two and then go out four, you end up in the same spot. Now, if I go down negative pi over two units and then out four, I am here. If I go to the negative side and then go five pi over two units, I am going to go um, all the way around two pi and then another pi over two, I land in the same spot. And if I go negative four and then just a pi over two units clockwise, I'm gonna end up in that same spot. So they're all representations and they all should land me in the same spot. And double check that they do, graph it, right? Or think about it for a second. So the next one says, now plot the point negative three, three on the rectangular coordinate system. Notice that when I plotted negative three, three, that it's in quadrant two, right? This is quadrant one, just to jog back your memory, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four because sometimes when you do the math, you may not end up with the point in the correct quadrant. And that means you're gonna to have to manipulate it by adding pi or two pi or subtracting pi or two pi um, to get the correct answer, okay? So it says from the pole, which is the origin, draw the polar axes, which is basically the terminal side. Um, and then it says uh, to find the angle. So there's my angle, there's my ray for the point, and I'm just going over the angle theta, okay? And the distance from the origin or the pole to the point is the radius, right? That's how many units you went out, okay? So it says, notice that the relationship between R, X, and Y is the Pythagorean theorem, right? 
If I were to extend this down and then extend this here, let me put that in another color just so you. My camera came off. There we go. So just so you can see, I am extending this. So that's the Y coordinate and then this, and that's the X coordinate, right? And if you notice, it makes that little right triangle. And so in the right triangle, we have the Pythagorean theorem, right? One leg squared plus another leg squared will equal the radius squared. Um, and so then to use that to find R means you basically just take the square root and you get this, but notice, notice that normally you get plus or minus, plus or minus the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And so when it asks you for a point, you're going to have to choose whether to use the positive radius or the negative radius. And that depends on the problem, okay? So we're gonna talk about that. So what that means is that this should be plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus, um, plus or minus, and then plus or minus, okay? So I put in the X value, the Y value, squared them, combined them, and then took the square root as best as I could, simplified it, right? And so then it says, to get the relationship between X, uh, Y, and theta, you're going to use the tangent, right? Because tangent is going to be the opposite over the, hypo over the adjacent. And so you get just X and Y. And so then to find theta, um, we're going to compute this, right? So then theta would be the tan inverse of this y over x. So in my case, it would be tan inverse of three over negative three, because those are the coordinates x and y. And then that, which I simplify that, it's tan inverse of negative one. And if you type this in your calculator in degree mode, um, so you could, you could be having it in radians. If you have it in radians, then you have to add pi, okay? So mine is not in, that mode. So let me do tan inverse of negative one. And it gives me, oh, I put 10 of <laughs> tan inverse of negative one it gives me negative 45. And since I'm in degree mode, it's negative 45 degrees. Now notice if I graph that on my paper, negative 45 degrees is here, but the point is not out here. The point is not three units out and then, um, 45 degrees going this way, right? It's just not. So what that means is in order for me to, um, or not three and it's out, three square root of two. What is three square root of two? So about 4.24. So 4.24 units and then I rotate it, um, rotate it, um, negative 45 degrees, I get here, right? That's where I end up. But that's not where the point is, okay? The point's over there. So I have two choices. I can either use the negative radius because the negative radius will mean I go here and then I go negative 4.2 and then I go about and I'll get the point there. So I have two answers for this coordinate. If I wanna convert negative three, three to polar, I have two answers. I can use the negative 45 degrees, but then I have to use a negative R. In order for it to land right on top of the other one, okay? Or I could also use the positive three squared to two, but if I did, then I can't go downward, I have to go upward. And so how do I get that angle? Remember, these two are just a pi unit apart. So you're gonna add pi to get over there. And pi is the same as 180 degrees. So if I add that, I get 135 degrees. So there are two representations of it. You just have to know which one's gonna use the positive radius and which one's gonna use the negative radius, okay? And a lot of times in the problems, they'll specifically tell you they want the answer where theta is between um, zero and pi, or they want the answer between um, zero and negative pi, 
Okay. And so depending on where they say they want the answer, that's which angle you're going to give them. And then you have to choose appropriately which radius, the positive or the negative goes with it. Okay. Every problem is different. So you can't just assume that it's going to be positive for the positive angle and it's going to be negative for the negative angle because that's not true. Okay. So it's best to graph it and then make sure that the point lands where it's supposed to land with the positive radius or with the negative radius, okay? So these really are problems you have to visualize. You can't just do it and then hope that it landed where it needed to land, okay? You really have to graph them or jot them down on your paper to make sure that they're landing where they need to land, okay? So for the next concept, it's basically taking equations in polar form and rectangular form and swapping them, okay? And so there's two methods to taking what's in um, polar coordinates and converting it over into uh, rectangular coordinates. And that one's the harder one. The going from polar to rectangular is the hardest. From rectangular to polar, it's easy. You just use x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta, and that's it. You plug them in, you simplify it as much as you can, and you're done, okay? If you can solve for r, you solve for r. If not, then oh well, leave it alone, okay? Um, but that's all that happens, going from rectangular form, x's and y's, to polar. That one's easy. That's the easy one. The harder one is going from polar to rectangular because there's two different ways to go about it and you really have to learn which one to use, okay? So you can either square both sides of the equation or you can multiply both sides of the equation by R, okay? And I'll explain to you how to know which one to do, okay? You would square both sides of the equation if you have R equal to a number. Then you would square both sides. But if you have R equal to trig functions, then you want to multiply by R on the same side, okay? So for example, they gave us this equation here, right? So I have a trig function on the right-hand side, which means I'm going to use the strategy to multiply both sides by R. So if I multiply both sides by R, then I get... Um, r squared on this side and then r cosine theta on that side. Now remember, r cosine theta is x. And remember that r squared is x squared plus y squared. So I substituted that, substituted this. This is in um, rectangular form. It is. But a lot of times they want the answer to be, um, they want you to kind of keep going so you can actually graph it. And then because I have x squared plus y squared, that means that this is going to be the graph of a circle, okay? But in order for me to figure out what the center of that circle is, so we're going way back to college algebra, like the beginning of college algebra. Um, in order for me to find the radius of that circle, I do have to get everything um, equal to zero, complete the square, and then I'll be able to identify what the center and the radius is of our circle. So that's exactly what we did here. We minus the x over, then we completed this square. How the heck do you complete the square? Remember the coefficient. So you're going to take that coefficient over two and square it, okay? And you get negative one half squared, which is one fourth. And so I added one fourth to both sides of the equation to keep the equation equivalent, right? So then here, when I factor this, I get x minus one half squared, basically whatever was in there is x, this number. If it's negative in here, it's minus. If it's positive in here, it's plus, okay? And then the square, and then I have y minus nothing because it's just y squared. So y minus zero squared equal to one fourth. Well, remember this represents the radius squared. So the radius is actually the square root of one fourth, which is one half, and the center is the opposite signs of these guys. So positive one half and zero. This should be just jogging back your memory. It shouldn't be something new that you have never seen before um, because you should have seen all of this circle business in college algebra. If you need to review all of that, um, now's the time to review it because they will be popping up quite a bit, okay? Um, 
circles and all of that and completing the square. So if you need to go back and, and, and practice completing the square and doing all of that, take the time to go do that, okay? So now we have an, an example here. So they want us to do this one. Now this one has R equal to a number. So that's when I'm gonna actually just square both sides. And when I square both sides, I get R squared equal to 25. Remember R squared is X squared plus Y squared. And this is already in the form. There's no X's or Y's that I have to move over and then complete the square. So this is a circle with radius equal to the square root of 25, which is five and center, since there's nothing in the square, it's just gonna be zero for X and nothing in the square. So it's gonna be zero for Y. Now this, is different, it has a trig function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by R. And then this is gonna be R squared. This is gonna be four R sine theta. This is X squared plus Y squared. This is four Y. I do have a variable over here. So I will have to subtract that over and complete the square to keep solving. So let me leave, or I'll just do another line. So here, if I take negative four over two and I square it, I get negative two squared, which is four. So what that means is I'm going to add four to both sides. Zero plus four is four. Then this is X minus zero squared. And this is going to be Y. And because it's a minus two, it's gonna be minus two squared. And then that's four. So this is a circle with radius equal to the square root of four, which is two and center zero and positive two. Okay, so if I have to graph these things and eventually I will, I can convert them into rectangular coordinates because I know how to draw things in rectangular coordinates um, and then just graph them that way. Okay, that's the purpose of this. Um, the other way is to go in the reverse, to go from rectangular to polar. That's the easy one I told you, right? All you do is substitute. So Y is R sine theta. And if I can solve for R, I do. So I'm gonna divide by sine theta. And instead of writing that, I can write cosecant theta because this is the same as three times one over sine theta which is the same as three times one over sine theta, which is the same as three times cosecant theta, right? Now over here, I'm gonna convert this to R sine theta squared, three times R cosine theta. I get R squared sine squared theta equal to three R cosine theta. Now this one you can't necessarily, um, you can't solve for R. Um, so what you can do is you can just basically get both terms on the same side. Um, right. And sometimes people will um, factor it and get the two different equations. Now notice that, um, but it is going to affect everything. So I would just leave your answer like this. But if you don't see that in the solutions or it doesn't accept that as your answer, remember that if you factor out, the R, you get R equal to zero and R sine theta minus three cosine theta equal to zero. R equal to zero means it doesn't matter what theta is, you're gonna have this as your points. R is always gonna be zero. If I graph that, that's basically just the origin point because it doesn't matter how you spin this point, it's still at the point zero, okay? So typically they're not gonna ask you to draw that because it's just a point, okay? Um, but if I set this one equal to zero, I can add that over, I get three cosine theta. I can divide by sine three cosine theta over sine theta. And then I can write three cotangent theta. 
And so this may be another representation that they'll want, okay? So you just have to be um, careful. Try this one. If it's not accepting that one, then go ahead and try to factor out the R and go with the more complicated one to get your final answer. Um, but other than that, that is the end of this section. So all it is is just an introductory on how to plot the points, how to write the different representations of those points, and then how to convert back and forth between rectangular and polar coordinates, and then how to convert back and forth between um, rectangular and polar equations, okay? And we'll use this information and some other information to continue in the next section.